Google Gemini was such a big release that I didn't get to talk about two of the most important pieces that dropped yesterday. One is deep research and one is what they're calling Mariner, which is their agentic web browser. I want to talk about both here. For deep research, I think the big takeaway is that we are learning that the hallucinations problem that has plagued in particular research citations through AI may be gone or may be going away or mostly gone. We have to do more work on deep research. I'd love you to try it out. Let me know what you find. But playing around with it, it just looks like the ability to cite correctly after doing research on a topic is mostly solved by this product. And if that's the case, it begs the question, how do we teach the skill of research to people who are coming up in the field? So as an experienced researcher, super easy. You can go really fast with it. I get the application. Great product. I'm sure it's going to get adoption. But students are also going to use it. They're going to use it right away. And I think this is a nice doorway into one of the larger meta questions around AI, which is that it's this enormous leveler. It's teaching us to do things faster than we've ever done them before, but it raises a question of what are useful skills that we still want to know how to do versus what are skills that we are okay letting atrophy. So one of my examples that I like to go back to is when I was a kid, we had calculators. Uh, we could do all of our math on calculators, but the teachers would never let us use the calculators because they wanted us to learn to think logically on our own and solve math problems. Similarly, I think one of the larger meta questions in education right now is to what extent are you keeping students from learning skills they need in the future by keeping them from learning with AI versus to what extent do you actually need them to learn without AI in order to gain the critical thinking skills they will need to use it properly in the future. Deep research is one of those that is aimed squarely at that debate. And we're going to see in the next few weeks, next few months, how schools start to navigate that, particularly higher education. Like if you're a junior or senior in high school, if you're in college, if you're in advanced degree studies, deep research is for you. And we're going to start to grapple with that. What does that mean? It's not plagiarism. Researching is not plagiarism. There's something else going on here, and it's going to be an interesting conversation. Number two, Mariner. Uh, no, this is not the Seattle Mariners. I'm from Seattle. We're never going to win a World Series. Uh, Mariner is the code name that Google gave to their agent-based browser extension. So this is an experimental extension in Google Chrome. It is a different conversation as to why they're launching this in Google Chrome when Chrome is something that the Justice Department is seeking to make them sell. I think the take there is probably that Google doesn't think the sale will actually happen. And so it thinks it's safe to keep investing here. It probably also feels like it can't miss on agent-based AI in 2025, and it has to take the risk regardless. Anyway, Mariner is out there, experimental mode. It asks your permission before taking sensitive actions like completing a purchase, but it is able to independently navigate the web and take actions on its own to accomplish a larger task. The demo video I saw was using the browser to go and plan a vacation. Now, I will say, as someone who saw the demo video for Sora and has now been playing with Sora from OpenAI, demo videos are deliberately cherry picked, right? Like they're picked to show the most effective use case, the best example, the highest and best use, the thing that makes it work the best. I have played with Sora and gotten a few good videos. I've gotten a few eh videos and I've gotten some really bad ones. I think you'll see similar results playing with Mariner, but that doesn't mean it's not coming in 2025. I think one of the big decisions we all will need to make in 2025 is to what extent are you comfortable with an agent using the browser on your laptop? We'll have that opportunity next year. And it's going to require a different kind of modality for us. We're used to a browser method of interaction where the active tab is where we are and there's other passive tabs that we can go and access when we need them. But with an agent, it's really that the agent has a journey they're taking. Maybe they're opening multiple tabs, they're going through their web search, they're accomplishing their task for you. And I think ideally you would also want the option to be on the laptop at the same time looking at something else. We don't really have a modality for how that works. We don't know what that user experience looks like yet. It's going to be one of the big design challenges of 2025. 
And I don't think that Google got it right with this one. So at the end of the day, if you are installing Mariner and using it in test mode, it simply uses the active tab right in front of you to complete its task, which means you really can't go do something else unless you're going to leave your laptop. Like you just would sit there and stare at it. That's not saving anybody time. So we're going to have to come up with new ways for agents to use the computer while humans also use the computer. And I think that's going to be one of the interesting design challenges for the coming year. So there you go. Two things that you may not have heard about that also launched with Gemini. It's like Gemini heard that OpenAI did their 12 days of OpenAI and said, forget that. We're going to do it all in one day. We're going to drop like a dozen things, have a quantum chip, you know, have, have agent-based web browsing, have a brand new large language model all within like 24 hours. It's crazy. All right. We will talk soon. I'm sure the AI gods will give us more news shortly.